What's up, everybody? Dory back at it again with some more Hell Let Loose content. Those of you that don't know, just a few days ago, they did a Q&A, and one of the people from my Easy Company clan decided to give me a list of all the uh, things that they talked about. I even had a few questions about, you know, uh, tanks, which I think I might do a separate video on. All this happened in their Discord, so if you want a link to that, it is in the description. So I'm going to go ahead and start with what the developer posted at the beginning of it, which starts with, here are some updates from the last 24 hours in Devland. Hole and coax MG tracers now cast light, are rearmable, and use correct velocity. New tractor prop for cover. Fix collision on trenches to allow better MG deployment. Pivot on first person perspective rig is now smoother. Optimization sim is now more advanced. Tank MGs no longer lock if you change seats while reloading. All third person characters leave footstep decals and dust kickups. Foy updates, Hurtigan updates, St. Mary updates. That's just the last 24 hours. Time feels a bit like a vortex at the moment. This guy uses a lot of acronyms so I have no idea if FPP or TPP actually stands for first person perspective or third person perspective. Uh, anybody that's in the comments can tell me whether that's right or not. But uh, moving on to the first question that the person asks, it says, can you tell us anything about the status of the new gameplay trailer? Can we expect it still in October or later? And the developer replies with, most likely towards the end of October due to pulling together all the marketing sides. The issue is that we can put together a great video, but making sure it hits all the right channels is a separate challenge. The video is currently being edited together. We had large portions that were able to be shot quickly and other segments that we're cutting in to showcase new features that aren't in the live build. I'll need to check with the editors. We spent a long time trying to bounce shells off things into other things. Alright, interesting. Let's move on to the next question here, which says, What would be the possibility of a weekly or fortnightly updates, even if they are small? And the developer replies with, Because soft releasing every detail about the title can work against the marketing, we're at a stage where any video we put out has a chance of being picked up by games media and content creators. And we obviously want to make sure that we're putting our best foot forward. Similarly, there are quite a few World War II titles dropping around now. We think that some of our mechanics and effects are quite unique. I don't want them to be misconstrued or shown in an unfinished light. That same person that asked the question before says, I'm not talking about videos or anything scroll up. I said updates with not a lot of detail so we know what's up. And the developer replies with, we're balancing between keeping you guys updated and then storing up good content for when we start to push release. All right, pretty cool, moving on. Up next, this person asks, what was the reason to remove yellow fields, which are known from the first gameplay videos, will they return? And the developer replies with, they were unoptimized Optimized. We're bringing them back with other types of fields. Our optimization goals are much more stringent. Uh, those of you who don't know what stringent means, it basically means regulation requirements or conditions, strict, precise, and exacting. Just to let people know, you know, in case you don't know what that means. To push the minimum system requirements, I think that's what that means. To push the minimum system requirements much lower. It's also important that they don't coal super quick so that you can actually hide them. All right, pretty cool. Let's move on to the next one. Is performance better or worse? or the same as the alpha for St. Mary. For example, is it better now than before? And the developer replies with, it largely depends on the map, but for early access, performance is significantly better. For St. Mary, significantly better. All right, the next question says, yo, Max. Max is the developer that's talking in the Q&A right here. Thoughts on having weekly Q&A? All the devs jump into text chat or voice comms for an hour or two. Same time each week so we know you're all alive and can be fed some small updates of what you're working on if you're comfortable and the developer replies with, it'll largely be me explaining stuff in a live stream type situation for QA. To be honest, I don't really consider any day Friday. I work weekends and have for the last two years. <laughs> so I'll chat to folks and see when is a good time for both time zones. US, EU, OC. Next question says, will all tanks look the same in the final game or will there be different skins and details on the tank like in Battlefield 5? Let's say there are three Shermans on the field and everyone looks different with other skins and details on it. And the developer Developer replies with, it's quite easy for us to vary them, wink. The next question says, anyone want to inform me what benefits come from 4.2, which I believe he is talking about the Unreal Engine here. And the developer replies with, some cleaner network infrastructure and greater ability to host 100 players. But since we already host 100 players, it just lets us make the tick rate better. All right, moving on. The next question that we have is, is whole MG on the tank done by driver? And the developer replies with, yup. We've done a lot of testing and the driver is the natural choice. The commander's viewport is on the top of the turn and pivots with the gunner, turning the turn whereas the hull MG basically has the same field of view as the driver. I gotta say, the hull MG 
makes driving the tank the most fun thing in the game, in my opinion. Well, that's interesting. The driver actually shoots the MG? I actually like that because, uh, you know, the driver just feels kind of useless. I mean, like, he he has an important role, but he just kind of sits there when the fight's going on. So I think it's really cool that the driver actually gets to shoot the MG. Um, but, you know, when the when the hull is faced a certain direction towards the enemy, that that's, that's a pretty cool, neat thing, I think. Up next we have, so what about the top guns, like 50 MGs? Would that be the commander? I'm guessing? If not, is that planned? And the developer replies with, we may, but let's just say the tanks aren't underpowered. At the moment, we haven't put top guns on the tanks. With the coax and hull going along with the main cannon and commander spotting everything, the tank is a death star. Max, can you one-shot tanks with an infantry handheld AT? And the developer replies with, depends on the handheld AT and depends on the tank. Bazooka is less effective than Shrek, but has more ammo. The Shrek can one-shot a Sherman, so long as it's hitting it right in the back and angle doesn't bounce. Interesting, let's move on. Is the plan still to make the game, like in real life, but still with an eye on fun? And the developer replies with, yup. Cool, cool, cool. Let's uh, move on. The next question says, Max, what about AT guns? Are they locked in place or movable? By trucks, crews, or whatever? And the developer replies with, we decided to lock them in place for several reasons. One, it makes them much more a part of the meta. If you have an AT gun set up, then the enemy team needs to figure out where it is in order to deal with it. Two, the other reason why is because I've never seen an AT gun be moved in an FPS that doesn't look incredibly weird. The next question says, Are are they predetermined or can you build them pretty much anywhere? And the developer replies with, anywhere. This way the AT gun is long ranger, AT sniper, but the handheld AT is for close quarters. So to deal with an AT gun, you'll need either a marksman or a constant suppression on it or artillery. They're powerful at range but weak to flanking. Think company of heroes. Interesting. Hmm. So you don't actually move them around, you build them up. That, that. I mean, yeah, I think that's pretty cool if you're setting it up in specific locations for defending areas. Uh, that sounds pretty cool. All right, moving on. Next question we have, will infantry be able to sit on tanks for transport? And the developer replies with, yup, currently road testing that system. Ooh, finally. Up next, this guy has a bunch of questions. Let's see. Will the 50 cal be able to cause dismemberment? Will machine guns be able to destroy lightly armored vehicles? Have you ever played Darkest Hour 41 through 45? And if so, do you see how the Panzerfaust is utilized? And will you guys take that route, which is historically accurate of soldiers, just being able to pick up a Panzerfaust while the Panzer Shrek has a class, or will you take the PS route and assign the Panzerfaust a class? And the developer replies with, yup, but maybe a bit lame for medics, as there will be so many weapons that could cause it, so we'll need to balance. Two. Most likely very light armored like jeeps and kubels. Three, not sure just yet. There are a lot of fun ways that we can go about it, but it'll most likely be a free-for-all weapon. Ooh, Panzerfaust free-for-all? Hmm, pretty cool. All right, moving on, next question. Are you satisfied with the in-game sounds or is it still a work in progress? And the developer replies with, everything is always being refined. I'm happy with the heavy weapon sounds. Ooh, I can't wait to, you know, try that out. <laughs> yeah. Up next we have, is there a possibility for MG Nest having a player belt feeding the MG so it increases suppression a bit like extra action and the developer replies with we have overheat mechanics that we'll apply also something like a 1k round belt with five belts the same person replies with another question. So yes, we will be able to jump on the MG position and help on the belt, right? And the developer replies with, to be honest, not too sure. That's a nice idea though. We typically like the second role to buff the primary role to reward people for cooperating. So we'll have to think about how that works. Hmm, that's interesting. That, cool idea, cool idea. All right, moving on. Up next, there is a thinking emoji. And then he says, you know how Blitzkrieg works? It's like, my head hurts. We camping here for hours. I just try to spot something. Sometimes you need to push. And the developer replies with, I've been thinking about it, and I think the Pack 43 may be a bit more special than the 40 in the way that it's deployed, if we add it. I'm not even sure those two questions went together. Interesting. All right, moving on. The next question says, would adding the Pack 44 be overkill or perfect? And the developer replies with, Pack 44 may be overkill. Holy shit, that is a big ass gun. Yeah, that, that would be a fucking overkill. That's like a... Oh my god. The next question we have, are there animations for entering, exiting vehicles, or do you just kind of teleport in and out? And the developer replies with, currently you teleport. We're trying to figure out where that fits alongside all other features. We're keen to get lots of other third person perspective animations done before we look at that, due mainly to the amount of vehicles and the complexity of achieving it. All right, pretty cool. Moving on to the next one. Will it be possible to surrender? And if yes, do we gain something with it? I know people, you already told me it was a dumb idea. 
but to hear it from the devs is much more satisfying. And the developer replies with, At the moment, we don't have any plan for it, but we'll see. If it arises naturally, we can do it. Drop gun, put hands up to surrender. Less manpower lost for you, but more score gained for the enemy. Oh, that's... Hmm, that's a cool idea. Just some, ah, dude, shooting prisoners? That would actually have more meaning to it. Oh my goodness, that would be cool. Along with those mechanics, that would, oh man. All right, moving on. Up next we have some discussion about the possibility of breakthrough by multiple people was answered like this. And the developer replied with, we have tailored the meta around breakthrough. Ideally, you need a combination of many things to make a breakthrough possible. Something that we quickly saw that was wrong in the alpha was that the enemy was all around you. Only rarely was there a tendency front line so we focus a lot on changing it to better reflect a front line so that pushing and breaking through is vastly more satisfying without a proper front line then artillery vehicles etc all become random things around you all right that's interesting let's move on what is the aim for the meta because in company of heroes the more the other team gets the harder it is to come back from then the developer replies with that there is a tangible front line and that it becomes a bit of a sd 1944 co meta of working out of the rock paper scissors equation in order to break through. We've changed the way our resources work a bit so that it's such an exponential snowball. We'd prefer the commander to widen your tool set instead of just give a power increase. All right, let's move on to the next one. The next question says, how's the anti-analyzing coming along? And the developer replies with, still a work in progress. Oh, look, it's a comment by me. How many MGs are on the Sherman? And the developer replies with two, coax and whole. All right, moving on. How many vehicles are currently in? And the developer replies with, production quality is the Sherman and Panther. The main thing that delays armor is is drive trains and track config, but all other vehicles match those, which is helpful, i.e. Priest has the same setup as a Sherman, Steward is slightly different to the Sherman, looks as similar to the Panther and Tiger, etc. We're finishing off some small bugs and issues with the Sherman and Panther at the moment. The moment we're happy with them, we'll bring them in with the others. All the infrastructure is now built. Jeeps aren't in yet, but trucks are. We've been ignoring them as they are much easier to finish. All right, pretty cool, moving on. The next question says, it might be a bit of a bias because I'm British, but I love seeing a troop of 75 and 17 pounder Shermans in Commonwealth markings. They were surprisingly in depth. And the developer applies with, the Brits will have to have fireflies. I have to wonder if other factions are gonna come through the DLC because I don't think we ever got any confirmation on that. Uh, somebody in the comments could probably let me know. All right, moving on. The next question says, what about concerns of addition with roles? Taking men from the front, do you feel it's well balanced? And the developer replies with, at the moment, I'm not hugely worried because players that aren't on the front are the exception will have their presence felt there anyway. The next question comes from the same person. When the servers were full during the alpha, there was definitely a feeling of a huge front line, super hard and fun to try to break through or hold. And the developer replies with, in my opinion, that was when the game was best. So the key is to create an environment where that's always the case. All right, moving on. The next question says, is it confirmed when the beta starts, it will open every week until EA? And the developer replies with, the key goal with the beta is to let you guys play a good amount to collect some great data. Those are our goals. The big issue with running it all the way up to EA is that it basically destroys any excitement for the actual launch. So we're going to plan it quite stringently. A bad launch can be fatal to a game like Hell Let Loose. So we're going to try and line it up as best as we can. All right, pretty cool. Oh look, another question that I asked. How many tank crewmen are there? And what are the roles in the tank? Can we open hatches? And the developer replies with, three per tank but you only need two to operate. No hatches at this time. We toyed with the idea and felt that it probably wasn't needed. And I don't love it when snipers become the most effective form of AT and you have a single crewed vehicle everywhere. I remember in Heroes and Generals, just endlessly emptying vehicles, which was good fun, but I think wouldn't work for Hell Let Loose. Aw, Durag is sad. Let's move on to the last one. So on the topic of tanks, what's gonna happen with hedgerows? Will you need a special attachment to a tank? Breakthrough effectly? And the developer replies with, we're going to leave it as is as it channels combat well. And the last thing that the dev says, I gotta run, time to get stuck on today's stuff. Great chatting. Oh, well, that was interesting. There sure was a lot of information. I might make a separate video on tanks. So, uh, you know, stay tuned for that. All right, I wanna thank everybody for coming out to watch. I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye. We're taking some fire here. Got my sniper. Oh, fuck. Ow, he just nicked me. Thank you.